we're talking today with um, Diane Coleman. And Diane, you are a candidate for the District 3 school board seat this year. And can you tell us a little bit uh, about why you decided to run again? You've served two terms, is that correct? Yes, this will be, if I get reelected on August the 24th, this will be my third term. And um, I'm seeking re-election because I feel like that um, that I've made quite a difference on the school board over the last eight years. And um, the experience that I've brought to the school board as a teacher and educator certainly has helped me out, but also as a business person in Navarre. And um, I feel like that now is not the time to change administratively on our school district. I feel like that experience is very important right now. And um, the experience that I've had working, of course, with the um, district staff, the current school board, and the superintendent, as well as the relationships that I've formed with our legislators, and just being being able to work within that group of people, I feel like it's very important to make a, a positive impact on the school board right now. In coming years, what do you foresee as the major challenges that the school board is going to be facing? I feel like the major challenge that we face every year is providing a quality education for our students. I think that we can never drift away from that. That has to be the main focus. Um, there's different issues that do impact that and our ability to, to, to do that, but um, that's the most important issue. As a school board member, we have faced certain issues with the budget over the last few years, but we, we decided to be proactive instead of reactive, and I think that's important. So we started looking at our budget four years ago before we had to make huge cuts and um, tried to start as far away from the classroom as possible and just begin to make those adjustments and um, I can tell you we've been successful doing that. The school board's job is to balance the budget and to write policy. Policy written based on federal and state law and that the budget has to be balanced. It cannot be, can't write bad checks and, um, and I can tell you again this year our budget was balanced. We did that successfully and also while doing that we still provided one of the top educations in the state of Florida so I think that speaks for itself. Gotcha. Um, and just talking a little bit further about the budget, in coming years, is there going to be, you're all going to have to make tough choices and, and pinch somewhere. Is there any particular area you think is, is going to maybe be first uh, to, to address or to look at? I think what we'll continue to do is to look um, at ways to not just cut the budget, but ways to enhance our funding. We've done that over the last several years always do that. Um, just looking at ways, you know, is there money available that we can perhaps get from other programs? Um, is there better ways for doing what we are doing? Looking at the, the programs that we do offer and then seeing if there's new programs that perhaps might be more cost effective. Are we duplicating anything? Um, and then, you know, we did cut, um, administratively we cut because we felt like that was the place to start. So we cut down from 91 to 82 administrators. And that's total district staff. That's not just at the school board level, but we only have 82 administrators. And that's when you're counting principals, assistant principals, and deans, then assistant superintendents as well. So, um, so we did that, and then we did cut school board and superintendent pay. We didn't cut teacher pay. Um, we've continued to offer our, our teachers a step raise and also um, you know, percentage increases when it was possible. But we have to be fiscally responsible. So tough decisions absolutely trying to keep them as far away from the classroom as possible but at the end of the day we all realize that that's going to happen if these things don't change um, we're hopeful right now that the federal government will come up with a new plan with the um, stimulus dollars and instead of taking those away at the end of the 10-11 school year perhaps just rename those and give us something else to work with so that's our hope right now gotcha. of course we know that santa rosa county is one of the best performing schools in, in the state of florida um, what does the school board need to do to make sure that continues to happen down the road? I think just being very careful with the decisions that we make, looking at the monies that we're given and making sure that those monies are being spent in the most effective ways possible. And um, I know you hear a lot about, you know, trimming fat. Well, when you've been trimming something for four years, there's not a lot of fat left, if any at all. And you start cutting lean and you start cutting, cutting muscle. So um, we just have to be very careful with that. Um, and I think that now is the time to continue to lobby for ways to get more money from our um, from our state representatives. Um, we are now funded 67th out of 67 counties. And I know that that's reflective of what's going on in the economy, but also um, there's a, 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 an element of the funding formula that is a DCD, which is called the District Cost Differential. And that really changes the way that Santa Rosa County is funded. I've worked on that for the last eight years. I'm going to continue to do that because I think there's monies there. But if they will look at our area and realize that even though they say it's cheaper to live here, our buses still cost the same as they do in Miami-Dade. Our um, books, our bricks, you know, what it takes to run the school district still costs the same. So if we could just become equitable in that, I think that can make a huge difference for us. And just touching a little bit on lobbying at the state level, and this is of course a state issue, but can I get your, your opinion of the FCAT and where we're going with that? Um, I think the FCAT, I don't think it's fair to have one test that, that decides a student's future. 
I feel like that what the classroom teacher does on a daily basis should be factored into that. Um, of course, this is a state decision. It's not a local decision. Um, you know, I realize that there has to be accountability. I would like to see us have more into the course exams. I would like more teacher input into that. And, um, you know, and I think that that has to be done, uh, you know, because all students aren't great test takers. So I think what they do on a daily basis should be factored into that. I think that what they do with the on their report card should count. And, um, and I think that we're going to see a little bit more of that because there seems to be more support of that coming out of Tallahassee as well. Gotcha. And then just touching again on the, the um, relationship between, let's say, instructional personnel and the school board. Um, what does this... What does the school board need to do in, in coming years to sort of nurture that relationship with teachers? Well, I think that the um, there's been a misnomer out there that the school board um, perhaps didn't care about our teachers. That is so far from the truth. Um, you know, personally, I was a classroom teacher. You never forget where you came from. And um, I have many friends that I made over the years as a professional that teach. I have many people that are in my family that teach, not only in the classroom as teachers, but also have family members that work custodial, bus drivers, food service. So um, I think that just helping them realize that, that the decisions that we're making are hard decisions. It's no different than they've had to make in their own families. You know, there's things that we'd like to do for our families that a lot of us have had to cut back on because of the budget. And, um, and I think just getting that realization out there and letting them know that we are doing our best to protect the classroom and, um, and that we realize that, you know, that we are not the backbone of the school district, but our employees, our parents, our community. Oh, that's who it is, and I'm just working together. And um, certainly, you know, communication is a key, and perhaps we can do a better job of communicating, you know, communicating that with our staff. Okay, Diane Coleman, school board district three seat candidate. We thank you very much for talking to us today. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure.